Dear Mr. Starrick, men hired, strike tomorrow. Disraeli's death will stall Corrupt Practices Act indefinitely. Gladstone will be far more pliable. May the father, etc., etc., be. So Starrick's got his finger in politics, has he? I need to enter the Sinopian Club and find out who B is. Tread delicately around Parliament. As if I don't usually. Your indiscretion at the Bank of England caused British currency to nearly collapse. Nearly is the operative word. Speaking of collapses, what of the key you found that unlocks very little? Henry took it for research. I am confident that the vault is ours. Nearly ours, Evie. Nearly. A letter. For me? Just imagine the wisdom of it. She was as beautiful as a butterfly and proud as a queen. Please tell me again where we are going. I found a letter from the Prince Consort among Lucy Thorne's research, marked with the same insignia as your key, dated 1847. 1847? The same year the Prince began renovations to Buckingham Palace. You think he added a vault for the Shroud? And since there is no map of the palace with the room marked Secret Vault. Your Highness, may I present Miss Evie Fry. Miss Fry, Maharaja Duleep Singh. A pleasure, Your Highness. My friend, the plans you asked for have been removed. Removed? By whom? Crawford Starrick, or someone employed by him. Yes, I thought you might recognize the name. I know where they are, but it is heavily guarded. That part will not be a problem. I thought not. We're going to need a plan. I can provide a distraction for the guards while you find a safe way inside. Oh, really? <laughs> for you, Evie? Certainly. Well, once I'm inside, I'll find someone who knows where the papers are stored. And we will be back on the train. Be careful. Thank you. 
It's not them. What's the plan? When you give the signal, I'll draw the guards into a fight and then use a smoke bomb to get away. And I'll take advantage of the confusion. Ready? Absolutely. No. Thing here. Looks like I have to ask someone where the plans are. <laughs> I'd swear, miss. I don't know where they've taken him. Taken who? The man. Dressed like you. The guards straight him off. Henry, the plans you stole, where are they? I don't know anything about that. The plans. The mission. <laughs> You're some of Clara's children. They took Mr. Henry. We couldn't stop them. I bit one of them Remember? good, though. They dragged him off in a red carriage. They won't get far, though. One wheel looked like it was about ready to fall off. You can see the cart tracks. It looks so wobbly-like.
been run off the road. They must be driving quickly. There you go. They're knocking people over too. Come on. And destruction of public property. I must be on the right track. Found you. Now to find Henry. I don't know anything about the carriage, but there's been some strange happenings around here today. All kinds of unsavory types wandering around, armed to the teeth. I don't like it one bit. Yeah, I saw them dragging someone out of the carriage after the wheel fell off. They said he'd hit his head. Not sure why they needed to take him to the church, but that's where they went. Yes, they pulled someone out of that carriage. Dead drunk he was. They carried him into the churchyard. Maybe he wanted a quiet place to sleep it off. Why is she hiding like that? Could have sworn I'd locked this gate. This is supposed to be locked. Bloody urchins opened it again, no doubt.
Send someone to move the architectural plans. Do you have them? Do they hurt you? I'm fine. Let's go. What about the plans? The plans are lost. Just concentrate on escaping, please. to look at that. I must find the vault before Starek secures the shroud. We'll talk to the Maharaja again. I will talk to the Maharaja. You will get your head looked at. I'm sorry my capture hasn't done your plans. You'd be safer on the train. Even if you find the vault, you can't just walk into Buckingham Palace alone. I won't be alone. I'll see you back at the train, Mr. Green.
What has happened? You know what's good for you. Your brother. What's he done this time? <laughs> the newspapers are all over Tupany's murder. And if that weren't enough, someone has stolen the currency printing plates. Was that also Jacob's doing? I doubt it. Now, no one trusts the bank or England's currency. There, there will be inflation, riots, manufacturing will jump to America for the cheap labor. In short, Britain is done for. Jacob, you've really put your foot in it now. What if I smuggle the plates back into the bank? Huh? It would certainly help. Better yet, it would call into question the stories on Tupany's murder, which would restore confidence in the economy. That's settled then. Britain lives to see another day. Oh, and if it's not too much trouble, would you mind destroying any counterfeit notes you come across so they don't circulate? Of course. Calm yourself. It really is very good of you to help. Follow me. The counterfeit money is being spent nearby. Well, if you can call it counterfeit, with those printing plates, it's nearly impossible to tell the real notes from the fake ones. Mr. Avalon. If this gets out... Well, I've said this already. When people don't trust their currency, and we're already seeing riots... Mr. Aberline. I have the utmost faith in you, Miss Fry. You two, follow me. I don't wish to be robbed on my way to the cart. The counterfeiters. Heard about the rioting at the bank? They can riot all they like. We won't be giving back those plates. What difference does it make? It's not like he has any real cash on him. Since we bought the printing plates, it's all real cash. Did you hear those crowds? Sounds like all of London is rioting. Nothing to do with us. I can't believe Jacob's managed to shatter the entire economy. Father was right. He acts in haste and repents not at all. Keep your eyes open. Anyone could be trying to get in. Yes, sir. Keep this place locked down. Yes, sir. Guard this place as you would the Bank of England itself. Absolutely, sir.
Now to sneak these back into the bank. There, as if they were never taken. London papers are running the story of how it was all a hoax. No more riots. Faith in the bank restored. Finally, I might get a quiet night on patrol. Miss Fry, I can't thank you enough. Glad we've averted catastrophe, Sergeant. Although it's Jacob who should be thanking me.
I just had these trousers clean. Who else gonna think I'm a trap? Who are you and what's your game? Well, if it isn't my dear old chum, Mr. Disraeli. Now, Prime Minister, which of your friends is about to stab you in the back? The Corrupt Practices Bill is a vital step in reforming our government. If the majority party is allowed to dictate the results of contested elections, we can scarcely call ourselves free. If we yield up our rights bit by bit to the courts, we can scarcely call ourselves free. This is so like you, Gladstone. You would rather throw your body upon the gears of progress than surrender one iota of power. By God, Disraeli, you are a fool. I'll not stand idly by and watch you drag parliamentary privilege through the muck. No, certainly not. You'd rather return us to the yoke of tyranny? Perhaps while we're at it, Mr. Gladstone, we could repeal Magna Carta and return the crown to the bloody stars. How dare you, sir? Merely because I do not wish to see government placed in the hands of judges, you would make these slanderous accusations? I'll not stand for it. Then I shall obviate the requirement. Good evening, sir. B, I presume. <laughs> Pleasure to meet you. B. B! My name's Herbert! Then why are you following the Prime Minister? It's just the job, sir! Some old bloke paid me to... From. Well, I was born in Crawley, but that's by the by. Who are you working for? Oh, I never got his name. 
Uh, old chap, big moustache, wore some kind of uniform. Whose ours, maybe? What's his game? Please, you'll kill me. And a three-story drop will shatter your legs and send you to the workhouse. Difference is, you can run from him. Tomorrow! Oh, my lads are going to attack the Prime Minister's carriage on the way to Parliament. Uh -huh. Perfect. Oh. So much for the house call. I have to find a way into that carriage. of this who the devil are you prime minister i'm your new bodyguard jacob fry i wasn't informed of any new bodyguard who's your commanding officer let the boy speak dizzy <laughs> madam apologies but we've learned of a threat on your life and the med thought it best to move quickly threat what sort of threat <gasps> that sort well, if you excuse me a moment First, Your Excellency. Going to be in the band with a bunch of 
Gladstone. That bloody man. He will pay for this. Thank you. What do you intend to do about Gladstone, young man? I assure you, madam, Gladstone is innocent in this. But he tried to kill my husband. Well, we'll look into Gladstone. Perhaps you can help me with another inquiry, madam. A gentleman with ties to Parliament, older, wears cavalry uniforms and has a large moustache. You seem like a rough and ready sort of fellow, Mr. Fry. <laughs> well, yes, I am, actually. And are you familiar with the poorer districts of our city? Roughly. Wonderful. As it happens, I've been eager to tour the Devil's Acre. If you were to escort me, I'd be happy to assist you in your inquiry. That strikes me as a dangerous idea. Then it's settled. Come back here to Downing Street tomorrow night, eight o'clock sharp. Good day, Mr. Fry. But I... Good day, Mr. Fry! Madam? Mr. Fry? Ready to take the air? Devil's Acre should just be coming alive. I'm afraid I must cancel our engagement. The lawn is crawling with scandal-hunting journalists, and I simply cannot be seen in the company of someone so... I'll see them off. You follow along when it's clear. Yes, yes. Uh, be gentle, won't you? The press are notoriously touchy about any violence to their person. Ha, 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 ha. I'll barely ruffle a hair on their heads. Shh, Desmond. That's yours, if you can get those chaps over there to follow me. Right you are, sir. Blimey! Look! It's Squire Bancroft! Good God. Best lead them astray before they tear me to shreds. Mr. Bancroft! Mr. Bancroft! What's coming up next for the Prince of Wales? Would you leave before me, Mr. Robinson's new work? to deal with the Liberals. Now, a drive is in order, I think. I certainly don't intend to walk the entire way to Devil's Acre. That's the way. <laughs> Stand 
Ready on. Let's go. Whoa, now! Mr. Fry, let us see what the Devil's Acre has to offer. Is your dog quite all right? Oh, Desmond's fine. He's just not over-fond of strangers. Or cats. Is a, oh, what was it? Everybody yes, a costermonger. Oh. <laughs> All things. Remarkable how the working classes occupy themselves, isn't it? Very industrious, I'm sure. Shall we go? They, uh, they seem to be, um... I've been married twice, Mr. Fry. I'm fully aware of what they're doing. God oh, bless them. He looks like a bloody idiot to me. Some mothers do have them. is that man selling? Best not to ask. Why? Is it something dreadful? <gasps> is it rat? I don't mean to be indelicate, given the present company, but another name for it is Bow Wow Mutton. Here we are, the old one-ton pub. 
best beer in the Devil's Acre. Marvellous! Do you suppose we'll see a... a brawl? Why don't you have a seat, and I'll fetch you a drink. So, this is a pint, is it? Huh? Remarkable. <sighs> nice doggy. Mm. Change your tune when me and my friends find you. Now then, Desmond, to get you back to your mistress, whom I have just left entirely unattended in one of London's most dangerous pubs. Well, if you never told your father how you felt about him, how was he supposed to know? I never thought of it that way. I suppose deep down we all just want to be loved. Just so. Hmm. Here, have a sweetie. Oh, Desmond and Mr. Fry, I'd like you to meet... Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't catch your name. John the Tosser. Charmed. I think we'd better get you home. Right you are, Mr. Fry. Come along, Desmond. <laughs> Well, well. If it isn't the dog walker. <laughs> now, let's not do something we'll regret. Tell me about the man in the Hussar's uniform. Quite right. Lord Cardigan is the gentleman we seek. Task. Always blathering on about his military adventures. Do you know where I might find him for a private conversation? I do indeed. He's in town now, as it happens, campaigning against the corrupt practices bill. Perhaps you could catch him in the Palace of Westminster. Do be careful. Let's go. The government could ill afford another scan. I assure you, I'll be very discreet. That's the way. Walk on, girl. Your stop, madam. My stop? <laughs> How delightful. Thank you. Thank you for a splendid evening, Mr. Fry. I shall be sure to speak highly of you to Dizzy. <laughs> oh, yes.
What's this nonsense about needing a password to see Lord Cardigan today? Relax. I've got it in my pocket. Look sharp, men. Allow no one past unless I authorize them. Cardigan has gone too far this time. I've a mind to contact Scotland Yard myself. Come on, gentlemen. I thought us united in opposition against this perfidious law. Describe the working conditions. Balaclava. Of course it blames us. Seems the corrupt practices bill is likely to pass. Lord knows Disraeli's played his cards very prettily. Nearly getting assassinated was the best thing for his career. Gladstone's beside himself. Gladstone allowed himself to be outmaneuvered. He should be. Come then. Let's go inside. I just need to get inside. No need for this to get messy. All right, all right. Just don't hurt me. Pardon me, gentlemen. Sergeant Freddie Aberline of Scotland Yard. Where might this scandalous activity be taking place? He's mad. Oh, yes, yes. It's uh, uh, just this way. Follow me, Sergeant, but discreetly, if you would. One doesn't like to be seen airing a fellow member of Parliament's dirty linen. What? <laughs> I'll be very discreet. Usually I would be in disguise, but my clothes all fell into the Thames. Ah! 
Clava. Come in. Oh. Ah, Minister Hacker. One moment. Dash paperwork will be the death of us. What? Give me a stout horse and a saber, and I'd have this government running as smoothly as Henley Regatta. Hmm? Blood needs must, and all that. Let's see. Oh, sign here. Initial. Initial. And. Done. Oh. Now then, <coughs> let's discuss this like. Je Good God! Who the bloody hell. Oh, shut up. should fall not on the glory fields of Crimea, but to an assassin's blade in the very halls of power. Are you finished yet? Take your bow, knave, for you have managed what no Russian battery, what no Indian tiger could achieve. Claim your trophy, and may you choke on it. Yes, but do tell me more about Balaclava. Farewell. Farewell, dear Britannia! Your dawn shall be dimmer that the Earl of Cardigan sees it not. God save the Queen and the Eleventh Hussars! What a prick.
Apart from the death squad on our tail, apart from that. Backup's on the way. Why are you pushing yourself so hard? It's not your job to fight Templars. I had this colleague. He was our boss's son. I didn't much care for him at the start. Everyone treated him like he was so bloody special. To me, he just wasn't invested in, in, in anything that didn't affect him personally. But I was wrong about him. He became my friend put himself through hell, and he saved us all in the end. So I reckon, well, I can't apologize to him, but I can, I don't know, I can try and live up to his example. You are a good assassin. Holy jeez! Hello. It has been too long. Galena! I mean, I have not seen you since we blew up that lab in Paris. Uh, there were many explosions, and you screamed like a baby. Bishop tells me Otzelberg is here. I will kill him for you. Super. Great news. Now, if you wouldn't mind keeping watch, I am going to lie down and die now. Rest. We have a big fight coming. Sean and Rebecca are safe for now, but we're still relying on you to find us that shroud. <laughs>